Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the second lecture of chapter one. We are still in introduction. As I uh, told you earlier, uh, I feel that uh, you should be seriously, deeply introduced to the whole field of manufacturing before we can start the individual chapters. So we are going a little slow. Hopefully, uh, you would like this approach. Uh, today we will quickly review what we did in lecture one and uh, the topics that we will try to cover today will be history of manufacturing, importance of manufacturing <coughs> and then the main idea classification of manufacturing processes. Right? What are all the different processes in manufacturing, shaping, solidification, particulate processing, deformation, material removal, property enhancing surface processing and assembly operations. Uh, we may not be able to cover all of these topics today, uh, but this is uh, what the general classification of all of the uh, field of manufacturing looks, li looks like. So let us very quickly uh, review what we covered last time so that you are mentally in the same state where we left you last time. We uh, talked about manufacturing being the backbone of engineering and we defined engineering uh, in top time trying to talk up about what is engineering. We gave you uh, some graphical pictures from a school level uh, background that the whole world is actually manufacturing and uh, examples of what would the world be if there were no civil engineering, if there was no mechanical engineering, if there was no telecommunications engineering if there was no computer engineering, if there was no aerospace engineering, right? Then how do we define manufacturing and manufacturing process? And we took the help of the example of a very large manufacturing uh, operation of the Boeing 787 Dreamliner. Then we started talking about the evolution of manufacturing that from very long time ago, since the beginning of mankind almost to the current century, how has manufacturing evolved? We will talk more about. And then the last thing we did is I showed you this uh, picture of a complex engineering product of our times, uh, right? A, a tractor used in agricultural fields. And we saw that there are a lot of different types of modern materials used and a lot of different types of manufacturing processes involved, right? So uh, the idea was to excite you that any modern uh, product has a lot of modern materials and a lot of modern manufacturing processes and manufacturing therefore covers your entire life. So with that now, very quick review, uh, let us start today's lecture. There are sometimes in books and other places uh, information which is really great. I mean, of course, uh, we choose books for you in every course, which we as a group of professors feel are very, very good textbooks. So already uh, all of the books chosen are pretty good. And therefore, the material they cover and the diagrams and the graphs they show are pretty good. But as I was just saying, some of them are brilliant. Some of them are brilliant. So this table one, table 1.1 in the Kalpak Jian manufacturing book is remarkable. Uh, I cannot show the whole table in uh, one slide. So I have broken it down into different slides. If you can see, right, uh, the first column is period time period in human history and the dates roughly of this period. Then the headings are metals and casting, various materials and composites, forming and shaping operations, joining operations, tools, machining and manufacturing systems. Right? So, so here there are very old, right? The Egyptian period, the Greek period, the Roman Empire, the Middle Ages, Renaissance, which is 14th to 16th centuries, 
right? So there are different periods in human history, right? So we are tracing from very, very old. So if you see, let us go through one row. Before 4000 BC, I told you we are more than 2000 AD plus 4000. So this is more than 6000 years ago. Metals at that time, gold, copper and meteoric iron. Gold people had already 6000 years ago, people had already started working with gold and copper and some iron which was coming from, do you know what is meteoric? What is the word meteor? I told you that I will try to keep on doing that. It is not an English language course, but sometimes some words we, so what is meteor? What is the answer? Yes, shihab, right? Those things that come from the sky while coming down because of their speed, they burn up, they get caught, catch fire. So if sometimes you see meteors and so on, they already burn, nothing comes to the earth. But if the meteor is too big, then it burns and burns and burns and still a large piece of a rock hits. If you remember, uh, sorry, not remember, if you know, when you are traveling from Maspat towards Sur, right, on the new highway, right, then there is a place where it is called the sinkhole, sinkhole, right, it is a very famous place, a lot of tourists go, a lot of Omanis go, right. How is a sinkhole created? A large meteor is coming from outer space, it is burning, burning, but if it is very large, it is still comes down as a very big rock and it hits the earth with a lot of a force and momentum. So there is a huge hole created and many times it is a large hole and at the bottom of the hole there is a still a lot of water and so on. So in this sinkhole, uh, uh, I mean you are going towards <coughs> Wadi Shab and so on, Wadi Arbiin and so on, right? And before that you have this big sinkhole. So why I was talking about it? Because sinkholes are created by large meteors, large meteors which are, so meteoric iron, iron that was there because of the meteors. Because of this, there is a theory that iron is a material which has come from the sky. It is not a material which was part of the earth and so on, but that is okay. So in the first row, that 6,000 years ago, 6,000 years ago, people had already started working with gold and copper and meteoric iron. And by this, what were they making earthenware? glazing natural fibers they were using these things uh, at that time and what manufacturing operation they knew hammering right you take a large rock and you start hammering the gold you take a large rock and you start hammering the copper into shapes and they had tools of a stone flint is a type of rock uh, which can be used to sharpen things wood bone, ivory, right, uh, is the teeth, big teeth of elephants and right, so they, these were the tools at that time. So that is 6000 years ago and manufacturing was already there and forming and shaping operations of hammering with tools of these. Then from 4000 BC to 3000 BC in this 1000 years, they started casting of copper, melting and shaping it stone and metal molds. They were making molds of a stone and metal already to do casting of copper. And there was something called lost wax process and they had started silver casting and lead and tin and bronze also started. At that time gold, copper and some iron. Now, right, silver, lead, tin and bronze in these 1000 years. And those tools were already there hammering and so on. But a stamping and jewelry. A stamping means that you are writing on the things that you are making and soldering, right? Uh, you are melting materials and you are making alloys like copper aluminum alloys and copper lead alloys and lead tin alloys and so on. Right? So, so now I am not going to go through the rest of all of this, uh, but you understand that rather than writing a very long book on the history of manufacturing. They have summarized it 
unbelievably well in just one table and in each row there are some dates through which the humans went so i would encourage you to definitely read through these lines right you i i never ask you to memorize anything i seriously dislike that word but if you read through things carefully with your mind open and your brain accepting the ideas then later on at least something of that remains and if you talk about those things with friends and discuss it or you make a presentation of the history of manufacturing sometimes some place then it sticks in your mind much much more and so on so that is how it is going this 1000 years 4000 to 3000 bc next 1000 years 3000 to 2000 bc next 1000 years 2000 to 1000 bc next 1000 years zero right so from here now this is the first year of the current uh, system 1 to 1000 ad then right so before 4000 then 1000 1000 1000 1000 1000 now you have started zero then they are going uh, right 1000 to 1500 the f- right 500 years then 1500 to 1600 each century 1600 to 1700 So, for example, you see, for example, this is uh, uh, around thirteen hundred, fourteen hundred, fifteen hundred of the current major industrial revolution in the world started. So, blast furnace, uh, casting of be- bells, crystal glass, wire drawing, gold and silver, sand paper, windmill. Then, in this century, cast iron cannons, tin plates, cast iron plate glass, and so on. Right. so so this is going on and uh, you can go to the book you can enlarge this and read it in uh it is continuing it is continuing uh this century of 17 to 1800 then the century of 18 to 1900 then when we come to the last century previous century the 20th century then they are dividing it only in 20 years 1900 to 1920 1920 to 1940 1940 to 1950 10 years only 1950 to 1960 you see the the way science and engineering have developed over thousands and thousands of years they were developing but there is i mean scientists engineers and their historians when they look at it one estimate is one estimate is that now every 20 years every 20 years now knowledge is doubling you see from 6000 years till today 6000 years till today whatever knowledge was there in the next 20 years that whole amount of knowledge will double so so now knowledge engineering technology science are developing at a much much faster rate but earlier they were taking some time so if you look at any one of them right in 1920s 1920 30 40 die casting right hugely modern method die casting had already uh, i mean emerged and coated electrodes were already there tungsten wire from metal powder was made and modern tools like tungsten carbide mass production transfer machines these were already there in 40s 50s lost wax process was developed much more this is a type of casting we will see very modern materials acrylics synthetic rubbers epoxies photosensitive glass extrusion powder metallurgy submerged arc welding right so now when we go to 1930s 40s 50s 60s very modern manufacturing methods have already been developed which will be the topic of the current uh, course on manufacturing processes